I look exhausted. Good morning from sunny Luxor, Egypt. It's about 3 a.m. The sun is already up. Just kidding. It's almost 9 o'clock. We're going to go meet Mustafa downstairs just after our little breakfast and start our tour of the Valley of the Kings. Stay with us. You know you want to see it. We are in the car on our way to the West Bank now. It is about a 40 minute drive from our hotel, which is on the East Bank. Lots to see, lots to do. We're still deciding which tombs we want to go in. Um, it's an additional charge for several of the tombs, but um, there's no reason to do this cheaply or just avoid things. If you're all the way here, I say let's do it. Um, some of the tombs cost about $6 extra to get in, and there's another one that costs an additional $90 to get in. Um, but it's incredibly well preserved, so we hear and from the pictures that we see. So we may go in there as well. Um, more to come. But now, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the 40-minute drive. On our way to buy the tickets for Valley of the Kings, I have turned the camera on so that it makes me look like I'm busy because as you can see, lots of people are trying to sell us stuff. But uh, no, thank you so much. It's a nice book though. All right, um, here we go. Flip in the camera room. Call the tough tough. Yeah, I think tough tough. Great. And where's this taking us? Into the Valley of the Kings? Yeah, this over here, it's part of the Kings. In the Valley of the Kings. What's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed. All right. Ahmed's driving us. And you? I am Sean. Sean? Yes. Good. Have a nice day. Thank you. Good. For the first time, visit here? Yes. First time in Luxor, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. But Egypt, not first time. Second time in Egypt. Second time yeah. of Egypt. Uh, Have a nice your visit, my friend. Thank you. The general price of admission for this uh, place was how much, Mustafa? The least uh, 240 pounds. 240 pounds to get into the Valley of the Kings. But there's an additional charge for some of the other tombs, such as the Tomb of Seti, which you'll see. That's the largest of all the tombs that has been found. And also the Tomb of King Tut. Tutankhamun, everybody recognizes him as King Tut. It's probably the most recognized pharaoh, which, according to Mustafa, has very little history. He died at about 17, 18 years old. But the tomb is the most famous because it is actually the one that was left the most undisturbed. Everything was found there, and it was in the condition that it was left in by the uh, ancient Egyptians. So we had to pay extra to go into those two, but I think it's worth it. It's the largest and the smallest coming up. How did that sound? I Good. sound stupid? Yep. No. Okay, so your entrance into the Valley of the Kings, the ticket gets you entrance into three of the tombs. They're going to stamp it at each of the entrances. So the first one we're going to do, as recommended by Mustafa, is the tomb of Ramses the Ninth. No, that's not the Ramses that you think it is, that's Ramses the Second. But this one is uh, pretty well preserved, and he said it's very simplistic pattern, takes you right to the back where the uh, sarcophagus would have been. Ramses the Ninth first.
is the tomb of Merimtaf. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but this is a 19th century king. There are four sarcophagi inside here, sarcophaguses. There are four inside of here. Um, this is more of a challenge because it is a long walk down a whole bunch of stairs to the final resting tomb, and then a long walk back up. One of the things I will point out to you is that even with the sun beating down on you in March, black is not a good color to wear. Maram's talk coming up. <laughs> that we're going to access with our regular ticket is going to be the tomb of Ramses III. Not exactly the Ramses that you think. Ramses III, 20th dynasty. Um, let's go check it out. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is the tomb of King Tut Ankhamen. King Tut, that's the one everybody recognizes. This was discovered in the 1900s, 1917, I think. Or actually, this was discovered in this year that's gonna magically appear between my hands. King Tut was only pharaoh for a very short period of time. We know that he died in 1718. One of the things Mustafa told us is that the kings would periodically come down and see the progress of their tomb. King Tut didn't really have a chance to do that because he died so young. So one of the high priests was making this tomb for himself, but when King Tut died, the high priest used this tomb for King Tut instead. The reason it's so famous is because this one was found completely intact. Everything hadn't been disturbed. All of the treasures and everything were left exactly as they were in antiquity. Let's check it out. So that was King Tut's tomb. I think worth the $20 extra that we paid. Um, it's amazing that they still left the mummy there and that he's still in his final resting place. Uh, other than that, everything else has been removed to Cairo except the outer sarcophagus, but it's still great. Well preserved. All right, this is the big one. In contrast to King Tut's tomb, which was the smallest one, the tomb of Seti I is the largest one. It's an added charge to go in here, which is this much in American dollars. Let's check this out. of the kings part of the day. Next we head to the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. This is supposed to be the showstopper piece. It is supposed to be the best looking from the outside particularly. No, thank you so much. He's trying to sell me something. Oh, hi, say hi. hi. All right, awesome, thank you. No, I'm okay, thank you so much. Um, all right, so next up is Hatshepsut. Uh, again, we're walking past all of the people. <laughs> Selling us belongings. Hi, hi. I love money. Hi. Oh, he loves money. God, these people are friendly. All right. Uh, next up, Hatshepsut's temple. Okay, Egyptologist lovers, 
Behind me is the temple of Queen Hatshepsut, built on such a grand scale. A little backstory about why this is so big. It's sort of propaganda, so when the king died, his successor was the stepson of Queen Hatshepsut, who was only three years old. So she was an interim, basically, queen, and then it ultimately became king for 21 years, sort of to legitimize her reign. She had this massive scale temple and ultimately tomb built in her honor. Um, let's check it out. One of the things that Mustafa told us was that Hatshepsut's temple is in line directly with the Karnak temple, and her tomb inside the mountain is also in that same exact line. Pretty cool. There. All right, also of note, the temple of Hatshepsut behind me is an added charge. It is this much. I don't know. I have the ticket in my pocket. Um, and. It was included with our tour, but not included with the entrance to the Valley of the Kings. Keep that in mind. So, leaving the Temple of Hatshepsut, it's uh, really impressive. I think the thing that makes this one so special is the facade being so grand. You would think that since this predates the other ones, the subsequent kings would want to outdo this temple, but no, this is just, uh, it's really impressive. But also, it's, the color just really harmonizes with the environment, the color of the mountain. Um, definitely worth, the, worth a look. It was 140 Egyptian pounds, which is this much in US dollars. All right, not sure where we're going next, but we'll find something and then I'll let you know, I'll check in.